Morning, Moshe. Morning. What are you chasing today? No, that's my winter hat. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> out walking the dog. What's the matter with you? I was out walking the dog. I forgot. Oh, I forgot. the dog. Why a mitzvah? Uh, but let me tell you, it was pretty cold in shul this morning too. They just turned over the heat from air conditioning to heat. Yeah, cold. Um, it takes a few minutes. It does. Sadly, we only had nine people for a minion today. But better luck tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, we also got uh, an Avel today uh, for his last time, Shacharit. Uh, we had problems because he lives in Al Fasi, there are not too many people. He lives down that way too much, except maybe. Right, right. And he's close, but that's it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Well, you should know no sorrows. No more to Yeah, he, he said she in New York and he only came back yesterday. Good morning, Kabul Raf. Good morning. Morning. I'm going to mute myself. Okay. How's everybody this morning? Doing okay with the cold? Okay, too. Morning. Morning, Shlomo. It is pretty cold out here. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sitting here in the shop upstairs in the office with the, the heating on, so it's nice and warm. I hope you're all wrapped up warm as well. Let's get some... Uh, Let's get some warmth of Torah to, to help us this morning. Okay. So we are on Masechet Beitza. We'll go back a little bit. The last bit that we discussed last week was a little bit involved. So let's go back a little bit and just, just see it again. We're on Daf Yutet Amud Bet. Okay. So we've been talking about, we saw in our Mishnah, we saw this Machloket between Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai regarding Nidarim and Nidavot. Right? That is our question. Our question is, if... Um, a person has, right, different korbanot, which they're obligated to bring, different nedarim, vows, which they've made throughout the year. They want to bring an olah, they want to bring, well, not an olah, but they want to bring shlamim for different reasons. Uh, are they allowed to bring those on Yom Tov? So we saw, according to Beit Shammai, certainly the answer would be no. Again, we're dealing with shlamim and nedarim nedavot that are not related to Yom Tov. If they're related to Yom Tov, right, you have to bring the shamei chagiga, etc. So that everybody says you can bring. But the machlok between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel is whether you can do smicha on them. Uh, smicha meaning not to give them rabbinic ordination, but to put your hand and lean onto the animal, right? But uh, but uh, a, a korban shlamim, the Dharam Davot, that is not related to, does not have a specific time, and is not related to Yom Tov itself. So Beit Shammai certainly says you cannot bring those. Whether Beit Hillel says you can bring those or not, that's a machlok, based on how we understand our Mishnah. Uh, and really what we said is that it's Machloket Tanaim. We saw that there is uh, two different opinions in the Tanaim as to where the Nedarim and Nedavot can be brought on Yom Tov or not. So let's pick it up from this brighter that we saw at the top of Yuteta Mudbet, right, the second line on the page, the top of Yuteta Mudbet, and the Gemara now, you'll remember, has a long discussion before we actually get to the uh, get to the connection with Asugya. But it's also with this Hanei Tanai Ki Hanei Tanai. Right, we've just shown that there is a Machloket Tanaim regarding this point. And now the Mishra, the Gemara wants to show that we see this Machloket Tanaim elsewhere as well. Okay. Ki Hanei Tanai Tanya. And we have a bright that says as follows. Ein Mevi'in Toda B'chag HaMatzot Bnei Chamed Sheba V'lo B'atzer Bnei Shu Yom Tov Aval Mevi'a Lam Tanatoa B'chag HaSukot. 
רבי שמעון אמר, הרי אומר בחג המצות ובחג השבועות ובחג הסוכות, כל שבא בחג המצות בא בחג השבועות ובחג הסוכות, וכל שלא בא בחג המצות אינו בא בחג השבועות ובחג הסוכות. רבי אליעזר ברבי שמעון אמר, מביא להם תורתו בחג הסוכות ויוצא בה ידי חובתו משום שמחה, ואין יוצא בה משום חגיגה. אוקיי, אז זאת הברייתא. אז יש שתי דברים אופיניונים in this Braita, we have Tanakama, we have Rabbi Shimon, and we have Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Shimon. So at this point, we understand that what are we talking about? We're talking about when you can bring a Korban, Korban Toda. So if we deal with a Korban Toda, right, that would be uh, fit into this category of Nedarim and Nedavot. Remember, the Korban Toda includes both the Zeva, both the actual uh, animal, which is the Korban Shlamim, and also includes the loaves that you have to bring along with it. So the writer said, You cannot bring the Korban, Korban to on Pesach, because it includes Chametz. Okay, somebody asked me afterwards, said, why can't the rabbis just say, that uh, designate that on this time you don't bring Chametz, but you just bring all the loaves of Matzah? And the answer is because the Torah defined what loaves have to be. Some have to be Chametz and some have to be Matzah. That's not something that we can change. Okay, so, uh, you know, people think, People think the rabbis can just do whatever they want. It's not true. The rabbis can't do whatever they want. Right? When there's a when we're dealing with the Xerot Rabbanan, and we have principle, hey mamru, hey mamru, etc. If the Rabbanan said something is forbidden, so Rabbanan can decide what mechanism is needed to allow it. But if the Torah said something else, the Rabbanan cannot necessarily go and overrule the Torah, so to speak. There are certain cases where the Rabbanan can uproot something from the Torah, but Shev al they can passively uproot something from the Torah. Right? Classic example of that. Which I'm sure you're all thinking of is shofar and Rosh Hashanah, for example. The Torah said you have to blow the shofar and Rosh Hashanah. Rabbanan said if it's a Shabbat, don't blow it because we're worried that somebody somewhere is going to go and carry a shofar to learn how to blow it. Arba Amot Bereshut Arabim, right? But that is for Shev Alta said. That is passively uh, abrusive. Okay, they can't actively go and change what the Torah said, despite the uh, mis, uh, mis, uh, misperceptions that may exist. Okay, so so we say you cannot bring the korban to that on Pesach. Um, and as we'll see later on here, it's talking about not just Pesach, but even Erev Pesach, because we don't want to bring the Kodshim Lebet Apsul, we don't want to bring an extra, uh, extra loads which you aren't going to be able to eat, and then it's going to fall into the category of Notar. So, not on Shavuot, right, because it's Yom Tov, again, at this point, we think that means that it's, uh, you can't bring an, a, a, a nedarim and a devot on Yom Tov, uh, Shavuot's only one day, right? But you can bring it on Sukkot. And again, at this point, we understand that to mean you can bring it on Cholamoid. That's opinion number one. Opinion number two is Rabbi Shimon. Shimon right? The Pasuk just juxtaposes all three Chagim together, meaning to tell you, Kol Sheba B'Chag HaMatzot B'Chag Shavuot. Anything that can come on Chag HaMatzot, any Korban which can be brought on, on Chag HaMatzot, you can bring it on Shavuot and Sukkot as well. In other words, once you're telling me that you can't bring it on Chag HaMatzot, it means you can't bring it on Chag HaShavuot or Chag HaSukkot either. And again, at this point, the implication would be our understanding is that there applies refers even to Chol HaMoed. Okay, so Rabbi Shimon has very, very much message. You cannot bring a Korban on any Chag even Cholamoed, because of the Sekesh. And finally, Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Shimon, 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 Rabbi Remember, a person comes to Beit HaMikdash on a Yom Tov, you have to bring the Shalmei Chagiga, the two types of Shlamim which a person can bring. A person needs to bring this Shalmei Chagiga, and there are Shalmei Simcha. Shalmei Chagiga, there is a specific obligation to bring a Korban a Chagiga, that Korban is a Shlamim, and you fulfill your obligation with that. But in addition, there is a mitzvah of a Samachta B'Chagecha, and the way we fulfill that is by eating meat, eating meat of the Korbanot. So if it's not enough, you have a big family or whatever it is, it's not enough just one animal to bring for the, the Chagiga. So you need to bring extra Korbanot, the Shomei Simcha. Okay, but since there is no specific designation for a specific Korban for the Shomei Simcha, but only the one has to eat meat or the Korbanot, so Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon says, 
you brought your korban to Adan, of Haga Sukkot, you've therefore fulfilled your mitzvah of Shalmei Simcha uh, through that as well. Uh, right. The Korban Torah, however, and we'll discuss this a bit more, cannot fulfill the obligation of the Korban Chagiga. That is a specific designation that you cannot do that with the Torah. Okay, so I'd come the Brighton. Right, so we're about a third of the way down the page. Uh, that was the Brighton. So then we said, Amama. The Gemara now analyzes the different parts of the Brighton. So at the beginning, we said, and we said pshita, that's obvious. We know that you can't bring chametz on Pesach. We're not talking about Pesach, we're talking about the day before Pesach. Okay, the as we explained, you can bring many, many loaves of uh, chametz with this uh, korban tonah, you're not going to be able to eat them all within the designated time, and then they're going to become pasul. And we don't bring koch, and we don't uh, uh, bring them to beta pasul, mina katechila. And therefore, we can't bring the uh, korban tonah the day before, and as we mentioned, that is why we don't say mizmola tonah on Erev Pesach either. Um, okay, and then we say, v'lo batzer ebnei shu yom tov, kasava, nadarim v'nadavod, enkribim v'yom tov. Okay. So, uh, so we say you can't bring the darim and the vodun yom. So that's fine. What does it mean when Tanakama said you can bring on Chagas Sukkot? Hey, Mat Ilema. The Yom Tov at small. If you mean, if you say it means that Chagas Sukkot is the actual first day, the Yom Tov, or you just said I'm out for Lobat Tzem. There's Yom Tov. You said you can't bring it on that Tzem because it's a Yom Tov. So clearly, Tanakama holds that you can't bring the darim and the vodun yom Tov itself. So it can't be that. Right, but it's on Cholamoyed. Okay, I can. We've now analyzed Tanakam. And now we analyze Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon, I'm a real member of Hagamatsu, Hagashavot, Hagasukot. Kosha, Baba Hagamatsu, Baba Hagashavot, Hagasukot. The Kosha, Lo Baba Hagamatsu, Aino Baba Hagashavot, Hagasukot. Okay, so all of that is just really the quote from the Brighter. Now, as we've said, the implication seems to be if the Tanakhama just said that the only time that you can bring it is on Chola Moed and Rabbi Shimon is coming to argue with the Tanakhama, so he's implying as well that you cannot bring it on Chola Moed. Um, so yeah, says the Quran, Matki for Rabbi Zera, Hashta Salute Misaltinan Nedarimon and Davot Mibaya. It's something very, very strange, right? You can, uh, you can uh, go and chop wood. On Chola Moed, you're allowed to do melacha, melacha, certain types of melacha. It's a fascinating discussion, and the Rishonim uh, go through, right? Is the prohibition of melacha on Chola Moed, is that Nisod or or is that Nisod Rabbanan? Okay, not so clear. And there is an opinion in the Rishonim, I believe it's the Rashba, and maybe others, who say that it's a, that the that, 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 Torah le Chachamim. In other words, the Torah defined. We spoke before about what are the rabbis allowed to do. So here's a classic example where the Torah gave the rabbis a lot of power, right? The Torah said that there are certain malachot which cannot be performed on Cholam Moed. Which malachot are those? The Torah, by definition, allowed the rabbis to decide. Okay? Rabbis doesn't mean uh, me and you, but the, it means, uh, right, Chazal. And that is how, uh, so there's a fascinating discussion over there in Chot Cholam as to how we know which malachot are allowed or which are not. But generally speaking, right, we say, the things which are needed, those would be allowed. There's also a leniency of the Davar Ha'aved. And the main distinction that we make is between what's called Maseh Hediot and Maseh Uman. Right? A Maseh Uman is any sort of skillful activity. or something that you need to go to a professional for. That generally speaking, we aren't going to allow on Chol HaMoed. Whereas a Maseh Hediot, which is something which is not, uh, you don't need a professional. It doesn't require a large amount of skill. It's something simple anybody can do. That would be... Uh, generally speaking, permitted. Okay, in broad terms, there's a lot more details to it than that, but um, but that's when it comes to. But but what we see, but the fact is that you can perform actual bona fide melachot on So you're telling me that the darim and the to bring a korban you can't. You can do melachot, but you can't bring a korban on cholamoed. That's ridiculous. So he says, um, right. Where do you get this idea from that you're not going to be able to bring the Korban on Cholam Moed? That does not seem to make sense. 
So Abai says, based on right, so based on that difficulty, we say it doesn't make sense. The whole machloke between the Nakam Rabbi Shimon and Albrighter is telling me you can't bring a korban on Khana Moed. So Abai says, no, 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 no. We need to reread Agma, our uh, Bright. The Brighter is not talking about Hakrava at all. That's not the topic. The Brighter is not talking about when you can bring the korban. What's the Brighter talking about? Everybody agrees that you can uh, you can bring on Chola Moed for sure. You can bring that Rashi points out. This is Amar Abaye Bakrava Kolei Amal Opligi Deshari Bechola Rosh Moed. Chola Moed. Everybody agrees you can bring your korban. You're not derem and davot. What are Tanakama and Rabbi Shimon arguing about? The question is regarding Balta Acher. Right? We mentioned this last week. Balta Acher, when a person makes a neder or a nedava, and again, the difference between a neder and a nedava is whether I say whether the designation is on me or the designation is on the animal. And right? if I say I am going to bring a korban, that's a neder. If I say this animal is going to bring a korban, that is a nedava. And the nafkamina between them would be if that animal gets a mum or goes missing or something else, do you have to replace it or how do you replace it? Okay, so he said, but when we, when a person does that, a person has a certain period of time in which to bring that neder and they cannot uh, delay the neder. And that is measured in the space of time of festivals. That's how we measure whether it's Baal ba Tachem. But there's a five way, we'll see only three of the opinions here, but there's a five way machloket uh, the Gemara Mitzvah Masech Rosh Hashanah discusses as to when you have transgressed Baal Ta'acher. So he says that is the topic of our Brighter. That is the topic of the Machloket between Tanakam and Rabbi Shimon as follows. Tanakam Savar. Shalosh Regalim Amarachman Afilu Shalok Asidran. Right? So Tanakam says it's three festivals from the time that I make a nether. If three festivals pass in any order, then I have delayed. So if I make the neder before Pesach, then I have Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. Right? Sukkot would be the last time I can bring. If I make the neder between Pesach and Shavuot, then I have Shavuot, Sukkot, and Pesach. Right? I can bring them until then. And if I make it after Shavuot, then I have Sukkot, Pesach, Shavuot. So really, which festival determines is the third Chag from the time you've made the neder. Um, it's the third one, but in... Uh, I don't start counting in any order. I just start counting for the next one. That is Tanakama. Tanakama Sava Shalosh Shogarim Afilu Shalosh Kesidran. Rabbi Shimon Sava Kesidran in Shalosh Kesidran Lo. Rabbi Shimon says no. So this is how, and Rashi explains exactly how we read this into the words of the of the Brighter. But when he says Kol Shiva B'Chagamatzot, he says that the 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 determining factor for when we consider about our heads, we start counting from Chagamatzot. We start counting from Pesach. And it's three Chagim starting from Pesach. So according to Rabbi Shimon, for Batach, you always have until Sukkot to bring your to bring your Korban. Right? Which Sukkot? Well, it depends. If I made a Neda just before Sukkot, so according to Tanakama, I go Sukkot, Pesach, Shavuot, and then by Shavuot, I'm fed by those three Regalim, I don't have to bring it. But according to Rabbi Shimon, he would say, well, we have Sukkot. Okay, and then we start counting from Pesach, Pesach Shavuot Sukkot. So in that case, you have four festivals to bring it. What if you made the neder just before Pesach? Well, if you made the neder just before Pesach, then there's no enough kamina because the next, the next chag that comes is Pesach. So according to both Tanakama and Rabbi Shimon, you have Pesach Shavuot Sukkot, and that's it. What if you made the neder between Pesach and Shavuot? So according to Rabbi Shimon, would say like this: you have Shavuot and then Sukkot, and then you start from Pesach Shavuot Sukkot. So you actually have in that case five regalim. On which to on which to bring a nether. So that would be the greatest uh nafkamina between them. So so that's the argument between Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Shimon and Tanakama, not about whether you can bring the Koban and Khola Moed, everybody would agree on that, but they're arguing about Balta Acher. Tanakama says, Balta Acher, we take into consideration three Chagim, right? Whatever the next three Chagim are, Rabbi Shimon says, we take into consideration three Chagim, but beginning from Pesach. So sometimes you have three, sometimes you have four, sometimes you have five. Okay, so that is now what about Rabbi Elazar Rabbi Shimon, the last opinion in the bright, huh? So says the Gemara, Rabbi Elazar Rabbi Shimon, Omer, Mevi Aram Torato Bechaga Sukkot. Um, right, in other words,
Okay, so we'll, 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 we'll see exactly how that relates to Baal Zakha, but, but, but now what's he talking about when he says Chagah Sukkot? So originally we understood, well, we, we didn't really ask this question here. We spoke about Tanakama and Rabbi Shim. We said Tanakama, when he says Sukkot, he certainly means Chola Moed, right? And that, that hasn't changed. Meaning now that our understanding of the right has changed to say that the Machlok of Rabbi Shim and Tanakama is about Baal Tachir, but we still understand that Tanakama is saying you can bring, when Tanakama says you can bring the Korban, on Sukkot, he means you can bring it on Chol Moed because he said explicitly you cannot bring the Korban Tana on Yom Tov. So when Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon says, Mevi Adam Tana Tov Chagas Sukkot, Eimat, what's he talking about? Ilay Mevachol Hashem Moed, I know Tana Kama. Right? If he says when Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon says that you can bring your Korban on Sukkot, so if he means you can bring your Korban Tana on Chol Moed of Sukkot, well, we already know that Tana Kama already said that explicitly. Right? So uh can't be. He must be saying something different. He says, no, when he says bring it on Chagas Sukkot, he means you bring it on Chagas Sukkot. He means you bring it on Yom Tov. And therefore you say that Nidarim and Nidavot, the Korban Tanah, can be brought on Yom Tov itself. So here we see that I, our Brayta contains exactly the same Machlok Rishonim that we saw prior, which is whether you can bring Nidarim and Nidavot on Yom Tov itself. According to Tanakama and Rabbi Shimon, the answer is no. And according to Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Shimon, the answer is yes. But why did Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Shimon mention Chagas Sukkot specifically? According to that, okay, well, Pesach we said is different, but according to that, you can bring it on Atzeret or you can bring it on Sukkot. Why did he say uh, Chag Sukkot, right? My Shna Chag Sukkot and Agar Rabbi Elazar. If, we, if we're saying, if we're saying that it's Cholam I understand why he mentioned Sukkot. But if you're saying you can bring it on Yom Tov, why do you, don't you say you can bring it on Yom Tov or you can bring it on Atzeret? Why do you say Sukkot specifically? So my shna chag sukkot and nakat rabbi elazar rabbi shimon. The answer is letame according to his reasoning. I his reasoning relating to baal tacher. The tanya rabbi shimon amel lo yomar chag sukkot shibo akatuf medaber. Lama nemar lo mar shaza chalon. Rabbi elazar rabbi shimon amel lo mar shaza gorem. Okay, so this is the tanya. This is quoting the bright. I believe it's in. Yeah, it's in Rosh Hashanah, Taftali Lamud Bet. That is where we have the big sugya regarding Baal Ta'acher. Right? And two of the opinions are Rabbi, Elaza, Rabbi Shimon, have you seen Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon? Both of them say like this. The Pasuk, which we said, we, we saw earlier, the Pasuk, which is Bachag HaMatzot, Bachag HaShavuot, U Bachag HaSukot, that Pasuk comes to the conclusion when the Torah has been discussing Chag HaSukot. So if the Torah has already been talking about Chag Sukkot, why, why does it have to mention Chag Sukkot again? Right? If you open up the Pesukim and look, you'll see it inside. So Rabbi Shimon says, right, Rabbi Shimon Omer, Lo Yomar Chag Sukkot, Shubo HaKatuv, Medaber. It's already been speaking about Chag Sukkot. Why does it have to mention Chag Sukkot again? Lomal Shazacharon. To teach you that it's the last one, right? It's exactly what Rabbi Shimon said. According to Rabbi Shimon, the transgression of Baal Tachir, you can only transgress Baal Tachir if you don't bring your korban by Sukkot. Which Sukkot? Right? The next one or the last one? Well, it depends. It has to go in order from Pesach, right? But but it, but it's always Sukkot. It's Sukkot comes at the end, and that's why he says it. Now, Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Shimon, his son has a different opinion. He's Ramash Zegorem. Is it to teach you, right? It mentions Chagas Sukkot specifically, not to say that this is the last one, but to say that this is the determining one. Meaning, once you hit Chagas Sukkot, you have always, you've always, that, that, that's the last time you have to bring your korban. So Rabbi Shimon, so, so Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Shimon says, Baal Tachir is determined not by the number of Chagim, but it's determined by Sukkot. So if you make your neder just before Sukkot, then, then, then it's one regal that you have. If you made your neder before Shavuot, you have two regalim. If you made your neder before Pesach, then you have three regalim. But it always ends on ends on um, Sukkot. Okay. What comes out of that, according to all three opinions, if a person made a neder before Pesach, right, the nafka, the, then then the time for Baal Tachir would be the same. That's the case where where everybody would agree that it's by the end of Sukkot. By the other cases, it would be uh, there would be a nafkamina between those three opinions. But bottom line is what we see, what's coming out of our brayta. Is that Tanakama says that in Darim and Davot you cannot bring on Yom Tov itself, 
Right? You cannot bring shlamim. You cannot bring a korban toda, for example, on Yom Tov. And Rabbi Elazar, but Rabbi Shimon says you can bring a uh, you can bring a korban toda on Yom Tov. Right? And that is the machloket. That's the machloket between them as to how to interpret Beit Hillel. Okay. So then, the last line of the Brayta, Rabbi, Rabbi Elazar said regarding this toda that you can bring on Yom Tov. And he said, Yotzei ba mishum simcha, ve'ein no yotzei ba mishum chagiga. The korban toda that you bring, through that you have fulfilled the obligation of shamei simcha, but through that you have not fulfilled the obligation of the korban chagiga. So now says the Gemara, we're onto the wide lines, with three lines from the bottom of the Amud, right? It says, pshita, that is obvious. What? The fact that your korban toda cannot replace your korban chagiga. Says the Gemara, that is obvious, pshita. Right? A korban chagiga is an obligation that I have to bring. This is not a voluntary offering. This is a korban chova. And any chova that I have has to come from chulin. It has to come. It can't be something that's already been, been, been dedicated. It's already been designated for something else. Once I have a korban which is designated for a korban toda. So that's as if it's given over to Gavua, it's as if it's given over to the Beit HaMikdash, and I cannot fulfill any other obligation with that. Um, so says the, uh, so says the Gemara, Lord, no, we need it. What's it coming to teach you? It's coming to teach you to Afagav the Palish, that even in a case where polish in this case does not mean a separate, but it means where you where you mefaresh, where you where you said it explicitly, where you where you, where you, where you explain. Right? The last Rashi here on the Amud says, when the person made the oath to bring the toda, made the nether, piresh al chagigato. So if a person said, I am bringing this nether, this toda, al menat, that it is my chagiga. I'm stipulating a condition that I want this to that to be the Chagiga as well. That does not work. You can that, and that's the Khadij that Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shemin is teaching us that you cannot say. Because the moment that you've said that it's a toda, so it's a toda, and you cannot a, a, make a further stipulations like that. Okay, we see this as well. This is exactly the same case that Rash Lakish asked Rabbi Yochanan. Right? He said, Aumel Halay Alay Toda. So a person says, that's exactly, you're taking the nether, saying, I, I, I have to bring this nether, but I will, through it, fulfill the Korban Chagiga as well. That's one question. Second question he asked him, he said, Hareini Nazir, Hareini Nazir, Agaleach Mimaot Maser Sheni. So a person says, I'm taking an oath that I'm going to be a Nazir. Okay, so what does that mean? Agaleach means the, ne, the, the Nazir at the end of his Nazirut. He comes to Beit HaMikdash and he has to shave all of his hair and he has to bring certain korbanot as well. So when it says here, Agaleach mimamot Maser Sheni, it literally translated means I will shave from the money of Maser Sheni. That doesn't mean he's going to use the coins to shave his hair, but it means when he shaves, when he's going to come and on the day on which he shaves, and on the, and therefore he has to bring his korbanot, right? The korbanot which come together with the shaving. He he says he's now made his oath that he's going to bring the korbanot from the money of Maser Sheni. Okay, again the exact same exact same question. I yeah he has an obligation to bring these korbanot. Can he bring these korbanot from the money of Maser Sheni, which is already hektesh? Okay, so the answer to both of these questions, right? He says Mal. Meaning the neder applies, but he is, or what was the first case? He said, Nazir, neder, haray lai toda, and I want to say by day chagiga. So he says, the neder works that it's a toda, but it does not work to make it a chagiga. Same thing with the Nazir. Your oath works that you're going to be a Nazir, but you can't bring your korbanot now from Maser Sheni. That's not that aspect is not going to work. Um, let's just see Rashi on that. Rashi top of the uh, Chaf says Agaleach mimod Maser Sheni korbanot shegazal alav akatuv the korbanot which the Torah said he has to bring. But Yom Tigach 
Tiglachto on the final day when he when he has to shave. Eknemi ma'ot Maser Sheni. He says, I want to buy those from Maser Sheni. So he said, Nadur. That's right to the first one. His answer is, Ala Toda Veino Tzebede Chogiga. You uh, right. You, you you you've made an oath to bring the Torah, but you cannot fulfill your obligation of Chogiga through it. And he had Nazir Veino Magalech Mima'ot Maser. You can't bring the Kabbalah from the money from Maser. Ela Mina Cholin. It has to be from Cholin. The Kevanda Maharei Alai. The moment that he said he is uh, now obligated. Right, once you've made the oath, you've said it to the, the, the to Gavot, to the Beit HaMikdash, that is like uh, in a different case of actually give, giving that thing over. The fact that afterwards he comes down and makes a condition, that would not uh, that would not mean anything. Tosso points out that if it was done the other way around, if you made the condition first and then said so, then it could uh, then it could work and that could be part of the stipulation. Okay, so we'll stop there. Rabbi, Ken Rabbi Kenigsberg, just yeah. one question: uh, Do we have any idea of the processing capacity of Beit Hamikdash? I mean, you could have three thousand people turning up uh, on Sukkot, and you would have a huge traffic jam, and perhaps they couldn't deal with all of them. What would happen then? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We assume that things. I mean, the the Gemara Pesachim, for example, tells. Uh, you know, go, goes into great detail in terms of when everybody would bring the korban not and who would be in the azaran, and how they would do it, and with different shifts. And uh, yeah, it was a. We assume that it was a that it was a well-run operation. I think nowadays, I'll tell you an interesting question. Nowadays, could we use? Would we be able to use a, a digital systems and all sorts of things to keep track in the beta mitzvah? That's an that's an interesting question. All right. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.